Hi and welcome. In this video, I'll show you how to use the web browser on your LG Smart TV. To start with, press the home button on the remote and you'll be taken to a page like this. Next, locate your app list and move along the row until you find the web browser, which has a blue globe-like icon. Click it to open and it launches the browser. Now, as a quick tip, if you want to launch the browser quickly in the future, press and hold number one. This will save it to shortcut button number one. Just say yes here. And going forward, you can press and hold number one and it will launch the browser. And I'll demonstrate that in action shortly. So we've landed on our landing page and we need to get around this with the pointer. So you can shake the remote like this to wake it up or you can just roll the tracker wheel. Looking at the center of the page, we have two sections. We have recommended sites and these may be different depending on your region. And below this, we have most visited where it records the sites I've been to. And if I want to close one off, I can just press the cross in the corner and it disappears. And we can adjust both of these settings in settings, which I'll come to. At the top of the screen here, we have the previous button. We have the next button, reload and the search tab. Now, if I click into the search tab, it brings up the alphanumeric pad and we have some shortcut buttons at the top, HTTPS, www.com, etc. And of course the letters and numbers and enter for a search. Beside this search bar, we have number one. If I click number one, it shortens the tab and reveals this plus button. And if I press this, it opens a new tab and we'll continue to do so. I can close these tabs in any order. And I can also close them by pressing the back button on the remote. Okay. So here we have a web page. This is the Google search engine, which is default, and we can change this in settings also. What we'll do first is come across to this menu button over on the right. Let's press that. And the first option here is scaling. We're currently at 100%. Let's see how high we can go. 125, 150, 250, 300. And as you can see, this makes reading smaller text a lot more easier from a long distance. And let's see how far we can go down. 100%. Next up is TV view. Let's enable that. And what you'll notice is the TV goes split screen. On the right, we have the browser and this is still fully functional. I can click in to the search box and the keypad pops up as usual. And over on the right hand side, we have the TV. If I want to select the TV to change the channel, I need to click above the TV display or below just to activate this side of the screen. Then I can use the roller wheel to turn the channel. We have a button here, which looks like a crossroad. If I press this, it reduces the size of the TV screen, uh, picture in picture of sorts. And I can drag this around and place this anywhere I like and continue to search with the browser. If I press this square button, it goes back to split screen. The X is to close this window and return to the browser. If I press this center area, the screen, the TV, it brings me to that particular TV channel. And now I can show you how the shortcut button works. I'll press and hold one. And this is bringing me back to the browser. And you'll notice that it closed that browser window, the Google window I was in, and I'll show you how you can change that too. Let's just bring a page up. We can add to bookmarks. When you have a web page open, you have add to bookmarks. A bookmark has been added. We can delete from bookmarks. We can move on to history. And here you can see the history of web pages I've visited. I can select any one to delete individually, or I can select them all and delete. Bookmarks, similar fashion. I can select one and delete or select all and delete if I wish. And of course, I can also launch pages from here. Next, we have settings. And here we have 
what happens when you start the browser. Currently, it opens that new tab page, which we've been looking at. We can set it to continue where I left off. Let's demonstrate that. Let's open a couple of pages. We'll just do a quick search for, for car. And we'll do another one with BBC. So we'll go to settings, continue where I left off. So just note, we have a few browser windows open. We'll close this now. We'll press and hold number one. And as you can see, it's retained those tabs. So going back into settings, we can also have the browser open up a specific web page. Now do note, if we do this, you cannot continue where I left off. It will just open the individual page. I've already typed one in here, but to add one, you just click change and type in the address here. Let's test that out. I'll press and hold number one. And as you can see, it's launched the Outlook page. Back to settings. And this is working the same way with start from bookmark page. Right, moving on, we have search engines and the default is Google. You can change to Yahoo or Bing if you wish. And here we have the option to show recommended sites. So let's just bring up a new tab. If we want to turn off show recommended sites, we just do so here. And as you can see, that's disappeared. We just have most visited sites here. Next, we have always show address bar. You may have noticed that the address bar, that's this here, disappears after a couple of seconds. If you want it to stay there permanently, just turn that on. And it remains. Private browsing, web browsing history will not be stored if this setting is enabled. And this will take care of this most visited sites. We have site filtering, blocked sites. If we click here, we can block sites if we so wish. Just enter your TV password, mine is four zeros. And here we can add a blocked site. I'll just put in ft.com because it's short. That's that done. So now we have ft.com blocked. Let's test it. ft.com, enter. And as you can see, it asks for the pin to go to that page. Great. So let's remove that. So you would go to the block sites, select the block site and just say delete. And now I will be able to go to that site as normal. That's site filtering. Pop-up blocker blocks pop-ups on websites when just popping up on your screen. You have an option to do not track, which asks the website not to leave a history of your visits. Adaptive streaming using JavaScript. This, if you deactivate the resolution of video stream from the web browser will be restricted to 720p or below. We have cookie settings, which allows the usage, the use and storage of website cookies, and you can turn that on or off. We have a, an option here for use blocked ads, or sorry, use block ads. You can set whether to use AD blocking. When this menu is on, the button to turn on or off the block ads will appear at the top of the menu bar. So let's just turn that on. And if we go to the menu bar, we now have a new option, which is block ads. And this will help pages launch quicker and obviously block ads if you so wish. And you can turn that on or off from here now. So I'm just going to turn that off in a minute. And we have automatic web browser issue report, which will just send a report to the development team in Korea. And finally, we have clear browsing data, clear cookies, clear all browsing data. 
and by, these are options you can use if you so wish. So that is basically it. I hope you found this video useful. Let me know in the comments what you think of the browser, if you think it's good, if there are any features that it's missing or what they should improve on perhaps in the next release. Be really interested to hear. Thanks very much for watching my video and I wish you a great day ahead.